All right, guys, welcome back to DeRezzed on Clownfish TV. This is our pop culture podcast. Yes, this is my real face. I'm not just a cartoon character. This is Neon, a.k.a. Tom Pratt, and I am with Michael Hovermail this week from Graph Paper Architect. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is going to be my co-pilot for an episode about tabletop RPGs. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about tabletop because I've been talking about it a lot more on the channel, the regular channel. And uh, there's just a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on in that space right now. Boy, yeah, yeah, more stuff going on. You can stay, shake a cobalt at. It's like, oh my gosh. So where do uh, we even begin? I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about. We'll, we'll talk about how uh, we both got into tabletop. Now, I am a. I've said before, I am a lapsed D and D player. I was huge into D and D back in the day. I was huge into. I used to play Marvel superheroes. Uh, I played a lot of this stuff, but. Um, I stepped away from it for years because, you know, life gets in the way. And then I came back to uh, a tabletop scene that was virtually unrecognizable from the one I remember. I think it's my personal opinion is it got very uh, mainstreamed and uh, we have a totally different audience now, totally different expectations. And uh, now Dungeons and Dragons is owned by this massive mega corporation making, I believe, questionable questionable decisions but uh we'll talk about all this these are opinions uh michael's opinions may differ from mine just so you know just so you know so if you haven't done so already please subscribe wherever you found this podcast if you're listening to the audio version go out to spotify amazon itunes wherever it's at it's like all over the place i don't even know where the podcast is if you're on youtube or rumble Make sure you subscribe there as well. So, Michael, I'm going to let you introduce yourself, talk about what you do over at uh, Graph Paper Architect, and um, just talk about games. Tell me about games. Oh, sounds good. Thank you. Yes. So my name is Michael Hovermail. I didn't put it on here. I think it's probably too big for the screen. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, and Graph Paper Architect is uh, my company that I had was – Starting started to start up two years ago, but now really finally digging in and, and taking a bite out of some things. Uh, the the idea with Grab Paper Architect is that I'm a life coach and I'm also a DM and GM coach. And as I'm helping people through all kinds of things as well as game design, I've been involved in the industry for quite a long time, all the way back to Meridian 59 by 3DO and Ultima Online. Before that, it was on dial-up with uh, BBSs and things. A lot of I ghost remember writing. those days. Remember oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone picks up the phone. Oh God, I'm going to die now. Why do you have to talk to the phone right now? Anyhow, I digress. Uh, been, in, been in and around the industry, uh, in and out of it for a long time. Long, long time. A lot of that is now derezzed. Ha ha ha. I had to use that. A lot of that's derezzed. Those sites are gone. Those games are gone. Yeah. Everything's yeah. gone. City of Heroes is gone. I was there. I was in the nightclub dancing when uh, it went down. I mean, I've I've been there. I, I was there when we had uh, you know all the stuff with Mohawk grenades and World of Warcraft and uh, you know waiting for mobs in EverQuest. When you actually sit there and wait. And all you could do is chat because you're waiting for the mob to spawn. And they go, well, mm -hmm. who was here first? Oh, Elf Lord was here first. Okay, cool. So we, everybody knew that Elf Lord was going to kill the orc and get the plus one right. ring. Right. You know, I mean, this is all back in the day. And of course, before all of that, it was tabletop. It was, you know, putting in stuff for different magazines, different cultures, different BBSs, ghost writing, lots and lots of stuff, a lot of pitching. So yeah, been around, done a bunch. Point being is with Graph Paper Architect is that now I'm in a position to give back. I want to help people not only with their lives, but with their businesses. So it's game design, it's life design, it's it's all of that. That's that is Graph Paper Architect. And then eventually maybe it'll become more than that. But right now I'm the only one. Okay. Well, everybody, everybody needs some help with their their lives. <laughs> Yeah, that's a really big deal. I mean, gamification yeah, yeah. of life, gamification, yeah. that's the term that they use. And so you and as you begin to have your life blend with gaming, it is amazing the kind of stuff that has happened now where we were. And I, I guess I date myself a little bit because where we were, let's imagine, you know, we've got sticks, rocks, some hot wheels. We're, we're digging holes in the dirt. We're playing in the yard, that kind of thing. And you come from that 
we're practically in a Star Trek slash Buck Rogers slash whatever sci-fi. Everybody's got the phones. Everybody's connected. Know, right? The world is connected. We've got cyber this and cyber that. Everything's at your fingertips with the touch of a button. And it, it, it'll it blow your mind to try to wrap your head around, you know, and it's like D&D is turning 50. 50 years of D&D. Just, just hold on a second now. That means when the first book hit the hit the ground. He gets born 20 years later. Now they're a 20 year old and they're playing D and D. They have a kid 20 years later. Now they've had, now you've got a kid who's had a kid. They're both adults playing this game, like two generations. Yeah. Right here. Same. Yeah. yeah. And that's the kind of thing that, you know, and that's, that's part of, of what we do is we talk about that. We talk about, you know, the gaming, the gaming industry, life and culture and how it has become, you know, I'll tell you, and stop me if I start going down too many rabbit holes, but like one of them is, have you heard the term lifestyle game? Uh, kind of. Are we talking about like the Sims? Yeah, well, no. See, so, well, it's sort of, yeah, the Sims is somewhat of it, but Extra Credits really started putting on, there's another really good series, by the way. I love Extra Credits. They do, they do some brilliant, brilliant stuff about game design and about all kinds of good shows. But there's this term lifestyle game, and it's when you have a game or a culture that, well, it becomes part of your culture. It's the only game you play. It's all you ever do. That is your game. You know, like people would play WoW. I was a, a WoW addict, you know, and, and WoW is it, man. If you're not playing it, you're watching a show about it. If you're not watching a show about it, you're reading about it or you're talking to your friends about it. or you, And that's all you ever do. And, you know, right. you don't play other games. You begin to exclude all other forms of media, even like, you know, it's like, I'd rather play WoW than watch a movie, do whatever, go outside. It becomes a lifestyle game where your whole entire life, your identity, everything about you begins to become wrapped around and inserted into this culture where, and that's like, remember when we had Star Trek versus Star Wars, mm -hmm. and that was, and that is their thing. And you see that a lot in sports. Like people have their yeah. team. Yeah. That is their team, man. You go in their house and it's everything, cups, mugs, plates, banners, tab. You know, they, they always go to the game. They've got the, the, what do you call them? The uniforms, everything. Jerseys, the jerseys, whole, yeah, body yeah. paint, the painted nipples. Body paint. I mean, they thing. go yeah. all in. They go completely yeah. and completely cheese in. Cheese heads. Yeah. yeah, cheese heads. That's their game. Yeah. That's yeah. their tribe. That's their thing. That is what they do. And so... You have, nowadays you have a life these lifestyle games. You've got people that are, will play something and in, in, to the exclusion of all else, or they will, you know, um, and not even really consider anything. And it's within each subclass. So you'd have within tabletop, right? Right. D and Ders. D and D is fractured into, you know, grognards and five E basically, more or less to put not to put a too fine of a comb on, right, but right. you know. But within sub in sub in cultures, there's sub brackets within the cultures. But there's like D and D. That's what they, that's what they play. D and D. That's it. There are thousands, literally thousands, and more being produced every day. Games, game systems, mm -hmm. game things coming up, and even then, you'd have, you know, Car Wars and GURPS and Mech Warrior and oh GURPS, God, that oh gosh, yeah, yeah, and Rifts, yeah, yeah. and. Yeah. All these other magical, magical games. I watched this video just the other day about somebody that said, what happened when they stopped playing D&D? Because mm. they more or less kind of burned out. Right. What happened was is they started picking up other games, Rifts and GURPS and Mech and all the other stuff, right? And yep. they began to realize that they had been keeping themselves from enjoying the concepts and the ideas of all of these other worlds and all of these other games. So it's kind of like, you know, you know, the people like Marvel's all I read. DC play, you know, yeah, image yeah, would yeah. play, play. They won't yeah. do anything. They won't even look at it. That's uh <laughs> that's really interesting. That is interesting. No, because I'm I drink yeah, water now. I go for yeah, right. That was that was a lot of information. Um, yeah. Sorry. So I, I I've noticed that there definitely is a you know kind of some some tribalism around a tabletop, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that caught me off guard. Really was. Because it does seem in, in some ways, you know, back in the day in the uh, 80s and 90s, right, when I, I gamed, um, that we did have things like GURPS and we had, you know, Marvel superheroes and uh, TSR put some other games out. But there were other companies out there. And I, I remember in the 90s, I was playing, you know, uh, Vampire and, 
you know, oh, don't even, home. don't even, I, I'll tell a story about vampire, but okay. you don't even, All right. I mean, it, I don't know. Should I tell the story? You, you the vampire, you can, the masquerade, you can tell, I don't, story. Ma- I don't know, make people mad. Cause vampire, the masquerade, right. I would played it when it, when there was white wolf, there was vampire and yes, yes. it got into yeah. LARPing. I'll say that we started LARPing. Yeah. The That's Vampire the Masquerade, and it started getting into uh, this is a biohazard situation. I don't want to oh, do this. Okay, all right. These yeah. are yeah, they kind of went yeah. a little, and so I don't 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 take it that way. Don't nobody no send, don't send hate mail. Vampire the Masquerade is a great game. I love it. It's wonderful, but <laughs> I, I think you know. I mean, the scene definitely has changed. There there is a lot. Yeah, more you're talking about the yeah the scene is yeah. And uh, you know, I just I just want to wind it back. I mean, how I started. Uh, playing was how so many of us start playing that was with uh, the box well, i'll tell you i'll tell you right now and i because I, i've been examining a lot of what you're what you're talking about because we talk about um osr things and recapturing mm-hmm. the days of old and and having all of that and it's the transition of when we gamed we came from the culture of there was sticks and rocks in the yard or if yeah. you wanted to play you could have chess you could have checkers i mean monopoly maybe you had you had some games not a huge amount. And then you had the D and D come out and then now you have all of that come out. But that was, the thing was, is that that was it. And to begin to simulate that experience, the first thing you have to do is turn this thing off and detoxify yourself from that situation where you don't have that because we had very limited signal source, you know, we had, and our lives were designed in a way that we had, what you were doing was what you were doing. You weren't in a million places at once. You weren't constantly being distracted by something beeping or vibing in your pocket, you know? Yep. So you would, so when you went to the comic book store, it was like, Oh, now we're at the comic book store. This is great. What do we have? We have what's on the shelf. That's it. Yeah. Pretty you, much. You couldn't, you couldn't whip your phone out and go, what else is there? Or what does this do or that do? No, you had what was on the shelf. What was on the shelf and previews. I remember that being a magical experience for me. Previews. Uh, the one shop owner handed me the catalog and said, all of these books can be yours for the right yeah. price. If you want any of this stuff, I can I can pre-order it oh, for yeah. you. And there were publishers I had never heard of, comics mm-hmm. I'd never heard of, toys. I mean, I think that's where I first heard of GURPS because they had, you know, a lot of these different companies were like, wait, they have a whole section, just, you know, games. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And you're going... Like this, then, they don't sell this at KB Toys. Like, what the frick is this? You oh know? my gosh, KB and, Toys. Wow. Yeah. I still have some stuff from KB when they went down. I was because I was eyeballing it, and when it went to you know super sale because they went went bye bye. Yeah, Boom. yeah. <laughs> I got some goodies. I have a soft spot. It was one of my first jobs. It was actually my second job. I was the yeah. Nintendo, I was this dates me. I was the Super Nintendo sales boy, and uh, I used to hand out the Mario stickers. And uh, the Dude. weird thing is, is I actually was a Sega kid, like I like uh-huh. Sega Genesis. That was because that was the thing back then, right? It was Sega versus Nintendo. But I was the I was the guy who handed out the uh, the Mario stickers, which I would always have to scrape off the carpet at the end mm-hmm. of the shift because um, kids always just took them and like so. But I had to give them out, right? They, that was my job. Like that was my job. And I was supposed to tell you, hey, yeah, Super Mario World is way better than that stupid Sonic the Hedgehog game that I play every night. <laughs> you know, it's so much better. Um, that is that, awesome, yeah. Tom. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised that we're here now because <laughs> I'll tell you, I, one of my first jobs was Toys R Us. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, then and uh, there we I go, was. Right? I was the only person who had the build, the inverted triangle torso build that was able to wear the Jeffrey the Giraffe costume. Oh, my God. You were Jeffrey the Giraffe. I was Jeffrey the freaking Giraffe down here in the valley in 101 degree weather. Oh, my God. They they sent us a Jeffrey the Giraffe that was probably original. It was (laughs) – it was – it was carpet on the inside. You know, and, and I know you talk a lot about Disney and parks, and I yeah, love yeah. whenever I go to parks, I always talk to the characters. That that's my jam. I, I I love to meet the characters and meet them because it's like I feel your pain. I know what it's like. I just hope to that your Donald Duck is not built out of carpet and hula hoops and duct tape like my right, Jeffrey right. was, you know, and 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 having a, a three and a half foot steel braced head strapped to your chest up over you. And you're trying not to. It's like being a being like a basketball mascot. Yeah, or something. and That's then it ties crazy. into the Mario as well because we I was there when we had Mario 64. Okay. And 
I actually have the Mario 64 cartridge that I beat with no help completely. All the stars. Wow. Yeah, I did. I was before kids, so I had time. It's a, it's a not for resale. It was the one that was in the display. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's, That's awesome. crazy. That's awesome. But you never Gosh. found Luigi, did you? You never no. found Luigi. No. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope. I got all the stars, got it all, and it's it's I have it. It's but yeah, yeah. That's that's amazing. I never knew that about you that you yeah, worked on TV. Yeah, yeah. So um, actually, that's that's where I picked up my first D and D modules. I think uh, I used to pick up my At stuff a KB at, uh, KB Toys. Yeah, it was a oh, uh, wow. so I bought the modules. I'm trying to remember. I was probably like ten. I bought the modules before I knew you had to buy the game. I didn't mm. fully understand what it was. I just knew all the older kids at school uh, during lunch and, and, you know, we waited for the bus after school. They were all playing this Dungeons and Dragons thing. Right. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm going to go buy some of these books thinking to myself being, you know, eight or 10 or whatever I was that, Oh, this is like choose your own adventure. Right. You buy the book mm -hmm. and then you go through the book. And so I get the, and the first one I got was, I'm trying to remember it was a uh, AD and D and it was from the UK and, um, I uh, had uh, the, it was a castle by the ocean and I'm sure somebody else will jump in the comments and tell me what it is. But um, I opened and it was the second, the second part of like a three part series. So I didn't get the freaking first number one. I got the second. Uh, <laughs> God, it was like the secret of something. I don't know. Anyway, I opened it up and I'm like, oh, my God, it's math. This is a math book. That's what mm -hmm. this is. Where do I start? I don't know what to do. <laughs> then my friends like you dumbass, you have to buy the game first. I'm like, this isn't the game. No, the game comes in the, well, you can two flavors. You can buy the box or you can buy a bunch of hardcover books. Well, mm -hmm. I don't have money for a bunch of hardcover books. So I guess I'm buying the box yep. and that's where I wound up buying the red box and it explained everything, which uh, to this day, I think it's, it's like the gold standard of uh, you know, an RPG for noobs because it explains mm -hmm. everything. Like, this is a role-playing game. It's it's let's pretend with dice and paper and rules. And here's how you go through. And I, I loved it so much. And, um, and yeah, then I started like buying all my books and stuff at uh, Walden Books. And, uh, you know, we just yeah. played every weekend. We played every weekend. We had one kid that... I think he was embarrassed to be there because he was on the soccer team. So he'd like sneak into the house and like, oh, don't tell anybody's here. I can't can't really acknowledge you guys. Yeah, week. yeah. When when you had to, when you really, yeah. yeah, I I can I feel your pain there. I've I've told the story before, but yeah, I know exactly what that's like. Yeah, where you, yeah. You your head would get put in a locker, or you would get put in a locker, or some other bad bad things could happen to you if they noticed those books. Yeah, so that that's where it was. That was where it was really weird because you know again in school in middle schools when I, you know, really got into it. And, um, you know, my friends and I would talk about nerd stuff and the D and D and the whatever, you know, lunch. And if people would just look at us, like we had a freaking like a third eye, but it wasn't cool. I mean, a lot of people were playing, it was very popular in the 1980s. It was so popular. They had to try to ban it. Right. But, mm -hmm. but like nobody wanted to fess up and admit that they played it and contrast that with current year, where it feels to me anyway, the tables have been turned, the lunch tables have been turned. And it feels like in a lot of ways, we got the cool kids and the cheerleaders and whatever. Now they're all, they're the geek chic crew. And they're all like, look at us, we're celebrity gamers. And it's cool mm -hmm. now. And, um, you know, but then in a lot of ways, it feels just like it did back then. Because the one thing I didn't realize is, you know, you talked about the divides in, uh, you know, the, the gaming communities. And I did not realize when I was trying to get my kids into it, that there was such a divide. Like I thought D and D was D and D, right? You just, just mm -hmm. D and D it's, it's like I played when I was, I was like, Oh my God, what did I get myself into? This is like, this is virtually unrecognizable from the game mm -hmm. I played, not just the game, but the audience too. And a lot of, um, I don't know, uh, arbitrary rules, social etiquette around the game uh, sort of popped up. And there was this whole culture of what you can and can't do if you want to be part of the community. And I was like, damn, none of this, none of this happened. You know, then I'm like, well, back when I played, you know, uh, second edition, <laughs> they're like, you grognard. I'm like, what the hell is that? 
<laughs> what the <laughs> hell is a grognard? Yep. What the hell is a grognard? Yeah. Get off my lawn, <laughs> blue hair. You know, I mean, I was just like, I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. So, yeah, I mean, the, the whole scene has changed dramatically. I mean, on, on one level, I mean, I'll tell you the truth. On one level, I'm happy that a lot of people that maybe wouldn't have played back in the day are playing now. That it is more accessible mm -hmm. to a lot of people. I think that that's pretty cool. But it also feels... You know, and again, this is my personal opinion, but it feels like it's it's also very gate kept from what it used to be. Um, we had all kinds of different people playing back in the day, and now it's like it just seems like, well, you've got to be the right kind of person, or you can't play our game or be part of our community. And I'm like, God, mm. there's some weird, there's just some weird stuff that's popped up around the game. It, I don't I, I, understand the psychology of it. I really don't. Well, I can delve into that because I do some of that as well. And um, in, in studying TED Talks and, and moving in that direction. And uh, part of what that is, is that there's a lot of – there are some games that have decided to do that, that they have mm. incorporated it heavily into their games, even so much to the point where they would write it into their books that if you are not of such and such of a type of person, don't buy this product. Do not bother even coming near this product because we hate you or we don't like you or whatever it is that they say. Right, right. That this is our product and we believe a certain way and therefore we only want people that are like us or of us, you know, you are one of us. Uh, you know, to right, purchase right. our game or play our game. And, you know, the, so first of all, you would, if you got into a group, you would go in and, you know, back in the day, of course you would be like, Oh wow, we're gamers. Okay, cool. We'd sit down and we, yeah, I don't care what you are, what size, shape, color, this, that, whatever, none of that mattered. You right, were there right. to game. We we're going to game. However, if somebody did go weird, you know, mm. and take things too far that they they're now because their character likes the other person's character. They want to try to sneak off and play spin the bottle or something it would do weird stuff. You know, when it would get to that weirdness, you go, no, you're not allowed to play with us anymore. You know, we don't you're not one of us. So the of us part has always been there. It's like if you were a jock, you were one of them. If you were a cowboy, you were one of them. If you were a punker or you were a metalhead or you were a whatever it is i mean watch breakfast club come on I mean, if you were yeah. you they all they're all there all the different i hate the word tropes but they, yeah, they were yeah. all, all the representations and it's true when you get into a group it's like you are one of us or you're not one of us are you here to play a game and have fun or are you here to use it as a pulpit to beat people's head over with are you here to you know yeah. have fun killing monsters or do you want to have political intrigue you know which so there's always an us and a them there's always an of us and there's always an of, of a them and it's a matter of do you find the group that you're that you're going to play with that you're happy with you know do you find that group and then these companies have now decided that they want to market to that specific demographic they want to market to that specific group for whatever reason probably something called money and uh <laughs> they think they think you know, well, yeah well well but and that's the thing it's you know i mean it it's um the harsh reality of it is is that you can believe that they are doing something because they actually believe it which is partially true and then you can know that they're doing something because it's that market demographic they're marketing to so they're going to do that and mm. that's just what they're going to do you know and then then because they know that that's where the money is and you don't know whether which one it is but yeah yeah i mean it, it is it's the scene you know you would because you know what it is like you, you, back in the day when we had tables everywhere you go to the comic book store if you had a big one like i, I remember we went to a, a big town and they had a big store we went into the comic book store and you had your people different tables the warhammer people were the warhammer people that was yes. they were warhammer if you don't walked over to warhammer figures. Don't touch and, your fingers. Oh yeah, if you walked over to <laughs> Warhammer and you're like, "Hey, um, I I like to talk some fairies and and dragons and roll some dice and stuff," they go, "No, you're in the wrong spot, dude. We don't we yep. don't play that. Yep, go go over there." Or and if you went over to you know, it, it, and so it, that's where it is. It's what we turn into is we there the us has already always been there. We've always had the pockets of the we are this and you are that. 
It's just that now what we have is we have the the magical technology of the internet, which blows it all up. We yeah. have huge, outspoken, crazy groups of uh, that never sleep, and they're constantly, you know, you have to be one of us. You have to this. You have to that. And part of that is that when you begin to tribalize and you look at the different tribes, so what are these tribes about? You know, what what what's the ethos of this tribe? Mm. Well, inclusion. Okay, great. Yeah, because that's the root of tabletop. We didn't give a crap. No. You know, it was inclusion. It's like, dude, do you know how to calculate Thaco? Then sit the heck down and let's grab some Cheetos and play our game and don't get weird. Thacker, you, know? you clown. You clown. <laughs> I'm a clown. Old man. Don't old touch man my blog balloon blog. animals because right. of... Rah, 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 rah. Yeah, it, yeah. And it's, it's just really sad when people choose to tribalize to the point where... Yeah. And the thing is, is that when you begin marketing, like I said, I've, I've been around the block a little bit here. You get your whiteboard and you look up and you go, here's our demographic and how are yep. we going to get these people? How do you tribalize them to the point where a game becomes a lifestyle game? They want to move the game to that level. If you are a Nintendo fanboy like I kind of am, I love Nintendo. I'm also a big Star Trek. You know, I love Star Trek stuff, but I'm not that. I'm not the guy done up like an Andorian at the front row of the of the convention. I've done I've been to one. It's great, but right, I'm not right. that far. You know what I mean? But that's what they want because that's where their money is. They know that every time you walk into Walmart and you say, "Well, there's some D and D earrings, there's D and D coffee cup, there's D and D socks, there's D and D blanket, there's, there's D and D like, this, there's D and D that." Yeah. They merchandise the crap out of it, and why? Because there's their money. They know this. So the more you tribalize your audience, the more money you're going to make, and the more. And the, so, how do you do that? You pick a direction, and you grab the wheel of that ship, and you stay on it. So that's I have the to, direction they picked. I have to wonder with Wizards with uh, Hasbro. You know, you talk about the lifestyle brand. Mm -hmm. and you talk about how, you know, they, they basically want to cater to the super fans. You know, who will buy anything, right? And if casuals yeah. go along for the ride, that's that's fantastic. Right. I'm looking at this like Disney. I mean, Disney does that. They basically have created a a religion. You know, the Church of Mickey Mouse. And they know everybody, the people that they're catering to. Yeah, you know, uh, $500 for some fake gold flake mouse ears, you're going to pay it because you're a Disney super fan. You're going to pay it. They come Disney up with the is your thing. Ridiculous stuff. And we were like, look, we got we got a room in the house. It's just full of like vintage Disney stuff, right? I mean, I, I was always a Disney fan, but I was never like freaking rabid about it. But mm -hmm. um you know, and they do kind of like that, that becomes such a part of your identity. So I have to wonder, and we see this in comics a lot, and we see this a lot in online uh, MMORPGs, right? Is it because you are spending, as I'm just throwing this out there, you're spending so much time immersed in fantasy, immersed in role playing, immersed in being part of another world, maybe as escapism, pure escapism, that sometimes people don't know where to draw the line like you know yeah, yeah this absolutely. is the real world and this is the internet and your group whatever but you're trying to treat everybody like they're part of your game they're your your enemies to vanquish because you're the hero of your own story mm -hmm. they're not people they're yeah. they're just chuds they're just you know neck beards or chuds. you know <laughs> i want to watch that movie whatever again. the whatever the Chud. deal is right Chud, but Do you remember what that meant? What did what did it stand for? C H U Chud. It was like I don't know, like something. It was, but it was an acronym. It was. Uh, see, you get me going down rabbit holes. Chalk when, white it, horny underdogs. <laughs> There's no W. <laughs> well, no, it's all one word. We just hyphenate chalk white. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but no, I'm like. I, a, I, I spend good. a lot of time. I mean, this is what we talk about all the time. I spend a lot of time and mm -hmm. uh, you know, thinking about this. I'm like. Is it because the difference back in the day was we did our thing? We were we did our role playing, right? We did our Nintendo, we did our arcade, mm -hmm. we did our comic shop or whatever it was that we were into, and then we went home and we had dinner with our families, and or we would go play outside, play baseball with our friends, go ride our bikes. We mm -hmm. got away from it. Yeah, you know, we had our time. In our case, it was Sunday. Sundays were tabletop day. That was the day we played Dungeons and Dragons. You know, a little bit of school we talked about throughout the week. 
what we're going to do that weekend. But then like all day Sunday was our, our uh, role-playing game day. But then after that, we went on to other things, you know, like I said, I used to, I used to play baseball neighborhood kids all the time, ride my bike. I did a lot mm-hmm. of different things and I could always kind of separate like, okay, well that's, that's me hanging out with my nerd friends on Sunday, mm-hmm. but then Monday night I'm going to go ride bikes with my other friends and then I'm going to, you know, whatever. And it wasn't like I had my, my cell phone there to be like, well, you know, you didn't play the game right. You chud and you said something that I got, I got you on camera saying something racist, I think. And I'm going yeah, to, you liked a tweet. To... You liked somebody's tweet yeah. of somebody of something. And oh my gosh, everything's going to unravel. Well, and we, this is goes into the life coaching. This is, this is part yeah, of what we yeah. do, what, what I do. So part of that is what happens is, is a um, couple of things. One is that uh, it is pure escapism. And uh, what happens is that some people, and it becomes more and more, some people really, really get into it. It, And it Mm -hmm. is, that's when we talk about the addiction. Like I was addicted to World of Warcraft. I got to the point where I, that's all I did. That's all I played. That was my connection to the world. I had friends and everything on there and I had a family and I had life, but it was like, I just, that was what I wanted to do. And it got so bad to the point where, you know, I was horde. I played horde. Everything was horde, 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 horde. And the people that played the alliance would come over and harass us and do things, or we'd go over yeah. there and harass them and do things, and you couldn't talk back and forth. And it got so so bad to the point where somebody actually tracked me down and tracked me down to real life and showed up. And I went, whoa, are you seriously right. now pounding on my door? You've driven oh from another state, God. and you are pounding on my door because of you know stuff right. that went down in a in in WoW. And it's like I'm calling the cops, and it went, and it was that wake up call, like holy crap, what the hell's going on, man? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it it there's it's 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 hard. You can't really put a do it in a pinhole. But what happens is is that when you play, and when you're immersed in role playing, and when you're doing these things, and you're firing off all your dopamine and your and your senses, and you're feeling good about yourself, you're feeling good about what you're doing. It's that really good sense of, okay, I'm, I'm having fun and enjoying. And some people will seek that and become addicted to that as right. a same kind of thing. They want the escapism more than life because, the, unfortunately, whatever you, it, it will suck. Your life will suck if you let it suck. And I got, when I was in there and I was sweating myself to death in the stank, nasty Jeffrey the Giraffe costume, and it was atrocious. Yeah, and I'm yeah. 18, 19, whatever, and I was, and I'm, just, and then the kids are punching me in the stomach and trying to, you're not a real giraffe, and my handler's not getting them off me, and all this stuff, right? And I went home and I'm, I was Jeffrey the Giraffe, holy crap, wow, you know, and I. You don't dwell on, oh, it's sink, or it was this, or it was that, or or I hate my life because I had to clean the toilets, or I had to scrub the Mario stickers off the carpet. Like in your case, you know, it's like you can yeah. bitch about it, of course. That's normal. Yeah. It's like this sucks. Yeah. But you don't dwell there and live there. You move on. I guess and, and so what it all comes down to is they don't really know what it is that it's going on. So the lines begin to blur, especially when you begin to tap into your own real world emotions and and feelings and ethos and things going on because here's what happens and this is one of the reasons why tabletop rpgs are such a good tool for Mm. therapists and for you know ptsd it's great it it really does work all right it's because when you are role-playing when you have that level of empathy when i talk about the fact that alignment is when it switches from a game like on a board to a role-playing empathy machine that happens right right you there is your your own self and then there is your character and there is a semi-permeable line between yourself and your character and within that understanding of the psychology you're considering what the character would do in the given situation and how you want this character that you this avatar that you are projecting portions of yourself into in order to be able to perform whatever actions that you're doing. And if you don't have any kind of education or training or understanding of exactly what's going on, that semi-permeable line of what you're doing with the character and what the character does and how that flows back into your own personality and your own life, uh, 
you don't really see that happening, but you do it anyways. And you can mm. easily lose yourself in that and go too far. Mm. And the, the way you observe this and the way that you see this is because children emulate. So when you expose a child to specific media, this goes back to cultivation theory and a lot of other things and that's been documented everywhere. If you expose children to certain forms of media, they emulate what is within that media, right? Right. So when I grew up watching Optimus Prime – and in one of the episodes I remember it was very famous. He gets straps the jetpack on. He's going after the ship. Megatron's mm -hmm. going to get away. And he goes up there and then it, they blast him and he comes down and, and he hits the ground. Boom. Right. And he gets up and they're like, Prime, Prime. And he says, I'm fine. You know, and then they're like, Prime, Prime, Prime. I'm fine. And he just yells out like, leave me alone. I'm, and he just, you know, and you. That became part of who I was, you know, and we don't go down too much into that, but yeah. that was what happened. So what happens is you get into these games, you get into role playing, you get into these things and you're going to go do this stuff and, and you have this semi permeable line of, of what you're going to do. And if you don't have a way to demarcate that and separate yourself completely in a professional manner, and this is part of what they do with acting as well. So if you're going to act and if you don't have the training of understanding that you are not what you portray, I don't believe that Leonardo DiCaprio runs around trying to kill black people. Or African Americans, whatever. I don't believe that. I don't think so. I don't God, think I that. Not. You know. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I hope not, because I like the. I like what he's done. I want to. You know. I like his work. You know. You don't think Tim Curry is actually out there murdering unicorns and 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 trying to kill Tom Cruise and you know because they're actors. And but when you act, and I've done that too. And when but so when you put yourself in that role in that character and you evoke all of that emotion and you portray this mm -hmm. character and you are evil. We're flipping bloody evil. And then you see the audience. The audience is like, oh, and you're like, ah, and then this stuff happens. And then after the show, when people come out to get photos with the cast and everybody gets the hell away from you, you know, it's like, I'm 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 not that person. I'm I'm the actor. Come and take a picture with me. I'm a nice person. I I, I like kittens and puppies. I'm not a, you know. <laughs> Not I'm not what you just right? saw. I'm, I'm, yeah, right. But with that break of a that break of reality and the illusion of it. And so my point, what it really comes down to is this where you went with it is people go too far. They yeah. get too much into it. And marketers know this. People know this. So what happens? So you go in and you say, All right, well, these people are generally gamers are a I would say a very inclusive bunch. 99% of the gamers that mm. I've ever encountered all these years, it's like, even though you'd go to the Warhammers and they say, no, nah, dude, we're playing Warhammer. There, there's always one of them's like, dude, do you want to learn how to play Warhammer? Yeah. Dude, yep. you want to learn? Check this out, man. I got this brush. I got this thing. I will teach you how to make eyeballs on your dude here. And they just, <laughs> dude, they'll go nuts. It's bananas, right? It, yeah, right? It, it's, it's wonderful. They want to bring you in. They want you to join them. They, it's inclusive and it's all of that. Yeah. And so, yes. And so the majority of them are like that. The majority are this or that. So then you have, let's say, the five-headed dragon in the room, which is, you know, I don't want to name it. I don't want to get you in trouble or de -rezzed in trouble. But basically what it is is they likened uh, the way that these cultures within their game were treated as other cultures in reality. Yes, Yes. They said that these cultures are being treated like these cultures were treated or are treated, and therefore there is a similarity and a blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, That's great. We've... So, you know, you want to go around and talk about how Skeksis are Nazis? Because they <laughs> are. Yeah, they are. Yeah, is yeah. Jim Henson a Nazi now? Yeah. Is he is it? no, he's not. He brought a beautiful, wonderful, fantastic everything to life, but that's what they are. That's what they did. They yes. they genocided the Gelflings, right? And and that's what it is. But it's part of a story. It's part of a thing, and it's part right. of what's going on. And and you. So then you begin to get into the like we said the uses. There's us now. If I sit yeah. down at a table, and let's say some dude comes in and he walks down and he plunks down and he's gonna play, whether I'm at a con or if I'm pro DMing or if I'm casual DMing doesn't freaking matter. Let's say whatever. And I said, dude, but whatever, you know, I'm, I'm blurry. Focus, <laughs> stupid camera. That drives me nuts. Yeah. There's this autofocusing thing. So good. 
okay, let's say this person sits down at my table and they have a red armband, the swastika, right? Mm. And they're not part of a high school place. This is like their thing. They sit right. down and they, this is my thing, man. I'm going to say, get the hell off my table. Yeah, yeah. Because now you've crossed the line of my criteria of what I give a crap about. You know, you've obviously come down and you've obviously made your statement. Now you have crossed the line of my personal criteria of what I will not accept, that I will not be around. And everybody's different and everybody is free to do what they want. I'm a big pro about freedom. Do what you want. Me personally, you sit down at my table wearing that and you ain't part of a high school play Sound of Music, get out. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, but it's like, eh, and that's what it turns into. They, they, you want that. I mean, it ma makes sense. to a, I think to 98% of us that are normal, rational human beings, that sort of logic makes sense. But the problem is, is that then you go too far with it. You go online and you go, if you play Axis and Allies and you play the Axis, then you're a horrible person. And I hate you. And, and, you know what I mean? Oh, well. <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. I, you I'm asked sorry. me, I, I mean, start going. I'm a, I'm a train on tracks, man. I'll, I tell me to shut up, have a button. We need a taser to just, I was just like mm. taser. Uh, no, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to be doing a lot more out. tabletop. We're going to be doing a lot more tabletop uh, podcast, but I mean, we see this attitude, you know, you talk about the guy showing up at your house with, you know, over world of Warcraft. Over world of Warcraft. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. We get Dude, that. Yeah. We get that. Not, we haven't had that. God having anybody show up at our place but we you know we've been docs before we've had we've had threats mm -hmm. before we had to get uh we've had to get the police involved the fbi mm -hmm. involved you know not that i personally think they were any credible threat but you have to take everything seriously because people oh, it's are a credible are unhinged, threat you know all it takes is, unhinged, you know One yeah they are unhinged and, and then, uh, you, you know and there, the thing is, is that like you said about that detachment though like People, we found out that there are people that are completely obsessed with Clownfish TV. Like you don't understand Clownfish TV for me, and I'm I'm, I'm the guy who runs it. A couple hours a day, we do our thing. We have other businesses. We have a life. We have a family. Mm -hmm. We we do it for a couple hours a day, and then I literally walk away from it and don't think about it again until tomorrow. Yeah. But they're like completely, they're completely like, these people are just spending all their time just trying to ruin my prey because I don't agree with their opinions about cartoon shows or role-playing games. Or, and we got more crazy people uh, from the tabletop scene. You know, we, we had a lot of people come in from like cartoons and stuff too, but that's really what kind of put this whole thing on, on my radar was like, my God, where are all these people coming from? They're coming from tabletop. I'm like, this isn't the tabletop scene I was part of. Yeah, like, no. back in the day, we did like, yeah, we'd go to the hobby shop, we'd play. Um, you were lucky if you found another person that played, you'd have to you know put something up on a bulletin board or something at school, be like, you know, looking for group, you know, looking for somebody to play with because well, nobody's it, yeah, playing. It, exactly. It's that semi-permeable line that they're crossing. And they yep. and a lot of them don't even realize that they're crossing, but we didn't cross it because you know, and a lot of us didn't cross it because when you went into it, you're like, Oh, this is a game. If yes, I yeah. am. Yeah. If if I land on Boardwalk, yeah. and I I I'm now bankrupt and you win, you know I'm not gonna flip the table and go insane, or I'm and I'm not gonna have a a, a a lament over the fact that now my pewter shoe, you know, who was already sad because he was a one shoe and didn't have his pair of shoes, <laughs> is now destitute a shoe and and can't even get picked up in the bargain bin at Goodwill because he has he's ruined and you know what I mean. Yeah. And yeah. so and, and these people and, and and part of it is so when you get to a point when your fantasy becomes more palatable than your reality, yeah, that's when you start slipping into the insanity of I'm gonna go crazy at these people because they said something I didn't like. They don't understand there's a there's a whole lot to it. I mean, I try not to get too much train on the tracks about it, but neon, it's like 
you know, the thing is, is that our world is built. We we're, we are biochemical uh, electrical battery machines. That's what we do. And we react to stimulus uh, if we don't have control of ourselves. And we, we put in fight or flight all the time in situations where we can't do anything about it because of our current situation and everything like that. We get an exercise in being able to have that fight or flight or have that agency mm. or that power and control in these games. And that makes them even more palatable because when the dork comes into your tavern and throws your plate of food off your table and you go, yeah, you're a freaking scumbag wizard and I don't like you being in my town. Yeah. And you yeah. can jump off off of that table and be just like, boom, and kick his ass, whatever. You can't do it in real life. You, 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 you take it in real life. You go to real life and you're like, yes, sir. I'll just show you where the, the, the Mario stickers are and, get mansplained to her with that term. <laughs> I hate that we, term. So I have I have actually seen that like the the cartoonish reactions sometimes that people have on social media. Yeah. And it comes across like they are role playing a character. Or they read in a comic book or they're like, I mean, n- real people don't talk like you talk on Twitter, right? Like there's exactly there's definitely something going on mm-hmm. here. And well, yeah. um because you have now also removed what they called I think it was it was Robert E Howard and he wrote that uh, civilized men are you know can, it, I'm paraphrasing but basically the civilized people are more horrible than barbarians because they know that they can say things without getting yeah. their head split open yeah and yeah, it, part of that way I also wrote a whole thing about this but it's what it is is that when you allow for anonymity people will do crazy. Yes. And once they are anonymous and they feel that they do not have any repercussions for their actions, they can let every horrible demon out and just be atrocious. And they will unleash every single piece of pent up rage and pent up everything. And they will turn on you, go crazy on you, all this kind of stuff because they're anonymous. So they'll do this stuff. And the problem that we have as creators being out here and out and about, it's like, Hey, yeah, you know who I am. They know who you are. Great. So which one of those crazies is the guy on the grassy knoll versus all the, the blowhards? Yeah. You know, that's, and you go, that's, yeah. Which one's going to show up at your door? Which one's going to dox you? Which one's going to yeah. go that next step? Yeah. You know, it's scary. Yeah, it's it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a it's a scary freaking world, man. I've I've noticed a, a kind of a decline in just personally with the the insanity, and I think I think what's going on is there have been a lot of well documented cases of it not going well for the aggressors. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, and either they got their asses kicked, or they lost their jobs, or they got arrested, or you know something. They got sued. There have been a couple lawsuits, and I think what happens is that you know potentially snaps people back into reality like yeah we can't do this because there are consequences this isn't a game you know there are real world consequences i could lose my job go to jail get banned from an event or whatever for threatening violence or you know um one quasi famous example uh was uh the youtube channel the quartering the guy covers magic the gathering cards and Mm -hmm. he had a guy a game developer uh, threaten him multiple times on Twitter. And of course, you know, he's probably thinking to himself, Hey, that's not, you know, it's not going to happen. Nothing's get punched happen. at a con or something. He got punched at a bar by Gen Con. If I remember correctly, the guy came up to him, he was drunk. He just came up to him and said, Hey, are you the quarter? And he was like, yeah. And he thought, you know, Hey, he wants to meet me. And he got punched in the back of the head or something. Now that guy wound up, he got a slap on the wrist basically, but he, he did get sued. He had to apologize. He had to give a little state. It was humiliating. He had to apologize, give a little statement. He's like, I know that the quartering's not actually a Nazi and I shouldn't have done that. And, you know, his lawyer prepared, whatever. Um, but he's forever going to be the guy that, you know, punch a dude in the head. Now there are going to be people that are going to give him high fives for that. I'm sure. Cause a lot of people don't like the quartering, you know, especially in that space. But the fact of the matter is, is there were real world consequences, you know? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think we've seen a lot of that and I'm just like, just chill the fuck out. You know, that's well, just, yeah. It's it's just a game. I mean, at the end of the day, as much as I love tabletop, as much as I love video games, as much as I love comic books, as much, it's all make believe. You know, it is. Mm-hmm. It's fun to bitch about the stuff, but at the end of the day, it's like you, you don't drag that shit into the real world and harass people over fiction. Fiction. You know, I mean, you can say, hey, I think your show's stupid or I think you're whatever, but you'd never be like, oh, I'm going to show up at your house because 
you killed it's like misery because oh you killed off my favorite character i'm gonna you know kidnap you and break your legs and, and break your ooh yeah <laughs> make, make sure you uh make Man, sure you, uh, that you just shiver <sighs> yeah that's what it feels like it feels like it's like these crazy <laughs> these crazy people well, like, and, then, you know? and you see that you'll see that too you'll see that that there are a lot of celebrities so that's like you yeah you don't know who's gonna freaking no. not understand reality and come at you because you played a villain or because you did something yep. they didn't like and you know they the, the thing is is that they don't have um they don't have that sense of reality i think maybe part of it you know to go back to our grognardia days you know mm. we we did other things if you have other experiences yes. like you know you're gonna get messed up if you poke if you throw a rock at the wasp nest or if you mess with the dog don't don't go up to the the, the dog everybody in the neighborhood knows that dog you don't go up to that dog and kiss it on the mouth you know stuff <laughs> There's there's feedback. You get instant feedback, real world feedback, and and people don't have any knowledge of that feedback. They have no sense of it at all. Even if they are adults, they have absolutely no sense of real world feedback. Um, where when you and then they take it there, and then they think that oh well, I'm just going to take it there, and this is going to be another one of those situations where I can type what I want to type and do whatever yeah. I want to say what I want to say, and nothing will ever come of it. And it's like oh no, something's going to come of it. Yeah, you know? and yeah. then and then but they take it too far too because then they go to cancel people and ruin people and destroy lives and ruin careers and ruin everything about them. Man, you ever heard of empathy? You want to talk about some empathy? How about if the next time that you go to work? And you say whatever you say at your job, and I don't like it. And then I go to your boss, and I, you know, Karen at your boss, and I go crazy, and I sign, do a petition, and I get you ruined, and I run you out of town. Why? Because I didn't like what you said at, at work. You know, because Pretty or much, I didn't like man. the way you played your orc. Or yeah, I mean, it's it's just the whole culture has changed, I and mean, I guess. You know, and we're going to wrap up here pretty soon for this episode. Went went down a totally different road. Up, I'm sorry, did I go the? No, that's okay. <laughs> it's, it's a very uh, very enlightening. But uh, you know, I I am embarrassed when I see people of our generation behaving like this. I guess I can understand it from younger people because there there are absolutely generational differences. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but. You know, when I see people our age, I'm like, you were out there riding your bike just like we were. You were out there, you know, like in the real well, world. Even, even if they weren't, like yeah, we were. even if they weren't riding bikes, or even if they did ride bikes, it's the capacity to lose your marbles over criteria. Everybody has a set criteria. You have a yeah. set criteria of what it is that you're going to be able to tolerate and not tolerate. And like I shared one of mine. I don't tolerate Nazis. Did I just lock up and... Can yeah. You still hear me? Yeah. No, I'm just I'm just doing your voice uh, for you. I'm just gonna put words in your mouth. I'm just gonna be a, a yeah. VTuber now because my <laughs> you have to bob up and down. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, we're but doing, it, yeah, they, they, they yeah, audio, but, so. yeah. So, but basically, yeah. Um, I, where was I going with that? It's just that the, that's their criteria to take something into the real world. So, yeah. what you say, what you've tweeted, if you've tweeted something that uh, they don't like, if you've, then now we're going to take this to the real world and ruin your career, or um, and, and then yeah. you, you you begin to take something from fiction into reality. Oh, you played the 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 evil Cardassian, so now I'm going to go to a convention and harass you or something. It's like, come it's on, crazy. people, it's crazy. It's, uh, it's just a yeah, gone bonkers, you know. And I think a lot of it, you know, during the pandemic, especially, I saw an uptick in in insane activities. But I mean, you can't lock people in their houses for two years and not expect something <laughs> we all something kind of to happen, you know. Uh, everybody yeah. kind of lost their their marbles. But um, I we are we gonna did. have to we are gonna have to wrap this one up. We are kind of okay. running out of time here, but uh, definitely appreciate uh, Michael coming on Graph Paper Architect on YouTube. I'm sure this topic, other topics you're going to discuss in relation to the whole the whole scene. Is that yep, what they can yep. find there? All right, get them out there. That's for sure. It's going to be a lot of fun, and and I think that the, the the main premise of all of it is as we were talking about is 
just wanting to have fun, just wanting to make games, just wanting to have community. Build bridges. Don't burn them down. If you're a grognard, build a bridge to a new player or a new player to a grognard. Be, you know, find out what's cool, what's fun, what do we love, what do we not love, you know? Because when we all sat down at the table, it's like, dude, did you see the He-Man? Oh, that was awesome. Did you see the Knight Rider? That was cool. Did you see the yeah, 18? Yeah. That was cool. And we talked about what we loved. Yeah. We didn't go, well, my parents like the color red and my parents like the color blue. So blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Come on. That is all of Twitter. Is so, all I know, Twitter, but it, yeah, and it, it's, it's, it's sad that you don't like, have any other way to get that out of your system. But I'll yeah. tell you one thing that I advocate is like, dude, if you really feel that passionate about something and you want to start paying attention to what is going on and doing something about it, do something about it. Do not tweet. Nobody's no. going to care. No. Nope. Actually do something about it. Stand up and do something. Don't, don't, don't think that my post will change the world. Yeah. No, not unless you pay $8. That's how it <laughs> no. that's it. You pay $8. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll get somewhere, but uh, anyway, my, my Twitter is one way. I just, I, I put, Hey, I did this and I walk away. Yep. Yep. That's the way to do it. All right, Michael. Hey, thank you very much for coming on. We're yeah, thank you very much for back. having me. I love, I love it. I had a great and, time. Uh, We'll we'll talk more about the uh, the utter state of uh, tabletop and and everything related to it. So please subscribe if and you guys. And we should have... talk about. Oh, I was just saying we should also do video games too. We should fun. do video games. Yeah, we'll do some video game stuff. Yeah, yeah, we had like a whole arcade going on there. Um, all right, guys. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you later.